7.32 p.m. Wednesday, May 17th. Councilman Selby? Present. Councilman Karakini? Present. Supervisor Keating? Present. Councilman Lukacic? Not present. Thank you. And Councilman Martin. Present. Councilman Carrick, can you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father Jerry? Lord, we ask your blessing upon this meeting as businesses conducted, future plans discussed, and questions answered. Please lead us to the best of solutions for the community. We ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, tonight we do not have any other plenary matters. So we do have a public hearing tonight. Um, we do have a couple of minutes right before the public hearing, so I, I will move on to item number one under regular business, which is a correction and adoption of the minutes from the May 3rd, 2023 board meeting. And Councilman Perry King, would you like to take that item tonight? Thank you, Supervisor Keating. I've reviewed the minutes from our last meeting, which was held on May 3rd, 2023. I see no errors or omissions, uh, and I make a motion that we approve them as written. I'll second. Councilman Selby? Yes. Councilman Perry Keating? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilman Martin? Abstain. Thank you, and motion carried. All right, it is 7.35 p.m. according to my clock. Uh, so we do have a public hearing tonight. Uh, so we'll move on <clears throat> to item number two uh, tonight and under our normal business. And the public hearing notice reads as follows. Uh, please take notice that the Town of Boston Town Board has scheduled a public hearing at 7.35 p.m. on May 17, 2023 at Boston Town Hall, 8500 Boston State Road, Boston, New York, to consider the application for a special use permit for a filling station located at 7072 Boston State Road, Town of Boston. At this hearing, at, at that time and place noted above, all persons interested either in this matter shall be heard either uh, against said special use permit. Uh, written comments or objections may be filed with a town clerk until 4 p.m. on uh, May 17th, 2023. This notice was dated on April 19th, 2023, published on April 28th, 2023, by the order of the town board, Sandra L. Quinlan, town clerk, and we are an equal opportunity pro uh, provider and employer. And I do believe we have some representatives from Carmina Woods, if you'd like to do a brief presentation, and uh, the floor is open. Sure. Let me you guys. Yeah, great. Yeah, you face the public. Yeah, 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 if you want to add the stanchions and uh, maybe flip it up to August too, you know, it's kind of hard for everybody to see here. And, uh, General, the, uh, the information you're presenting on, this is the same documentation all those board members have in the packet, right? Okay. Perfect. Okay. So board members, we have everything here, and that way the public can see what you're talking about. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, good evening. I'm Chris Wood with Fermi Wood Design. Also with me is Ray Miranda. He's the owner. And Brian Atia. He's the attorney representing Mr. Miranda. Uh, what we're proposing is a... Uh, The new development on the site to the north of the existing Martin uh, would consist of a 5,200 square foot media store, which would have a Tim Hortons with a drive through in it, and also <coughs> a 5,000 square foot office store in the back, most likely to be occupied by Mr. Miranda's company. Um, also, as part of the project, we are closing a fueling station, as you mentioned. Uh, we have four pumps, eight fueling Feeling positions. Um, as part of the project, we did have to prepare a traffic study that was reviewed by both the town engineering consultant and the DOT. Um, as a result of that, the stuff shown on the plans, the outside road improvements, were part of the comments and approval by the DOT. That includes a dedicated left turn lane going north of Boston State Road 
and a dedicated right turn lane in going south of Watson State Road. <coughs> Sorry. And in both directions, north and south, they would both have a through lane. So none of that traffic would have to wait for right then or left then in the new plaza. The new plaza driveway exiting will have a right turn lane out and a left turn lane out and one lane entering. Um, we did, as part of Seeker, uh, get our SICO approval for archaeological. We have DOT approval. Um, and we did get planning board approval about a month and a half ago. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I can certainly answer them. Or can you hear from the public? Sure. Um, I don't think the board members have any questions at this time. None at this time. All right. Um, if, if, actually, if you don't mind, well, we'll open up the floor. And, okay. Okay. <laughs> the floor is open. If anyone would like to make any comments, uh, please come up to the microphone, state your name, your address, and uh, just respect that. Uh, respect for everyone that is here. Uh, uh, please, uh, three minutes uh, each, if possible. Thank you. I'm attorney Matthew Lawford. <clears throat> I uh, represent a company who has a property next door, Boston Building Capital, at 7074 uh, Boston State Road. And uh, we have some few concerns with the development, specifically with the traffic study uh, done on the property and the traffic impact, as well as the, uh, uh, the impact that the fueling station will have on the property. Uh, I'm assuming tonight that the board will you know, either approve or deny this special use permit based off the benefit that it provides to the community. Putting the fueling station here is only really going to benefit uh, you know, the individual property owner. Uh, none of the sales tax revenue, I'm assuming it's not going to flood over to Boston State Road. And the improvement that occurs on the property is not specific to Boston State, uh, Boston itself. Uh, so uh, the property taxes that increase uh, due to the improvement is not specific to the fueling station. Um, <clears throat> So it really seems like we're, we're, we're doing this uh, improvement uh, for the fueling station and we're not providing any benefit uh, and we're only being laden down with the potential environmental concerns that we have, especially with 18 Mile Creek in the back. With, uh, <clears throat> with the carcinogens that studies have found that are released into the air as the neighboring property owners. Um, and the future impact on the property itself, when you go to sell it, you're going to limit <coughs> for future uses to this because uh, you're going to have uh, less interest. It's very hard to sell a gas station. Uh, going on to the traffic study, uh, I, my property owner's driveway is adjacent to this uh, driveway. So you're going to have two traffic outlets along with the 219 coming right there. And you're going to have people backed up into this turning lane. So when my uh, uh, clients, uh, my client uh, visitors are going to be turning out, you're going to have an Im impact on their ability to make a left-hand turn. So I appreciate uh, the board's uh, consideration in denying the filling station and also looking into if we could put a traffic light uh, at this area to provide better protection to the individuals uh, visiting these uh, mm -hmm. properties. Thank you. Showing all this. Good evening, Ryan Achia, on behalf of the applicant. I just would like to make a couple comments in response to the ones that were just made by Mr. Laufer. I think it's important if the board is not already aware that Mr. Laufer's client is my client's current landlord. So he's probably not real happy that this project is going in next door because he's going to lose his, his primary tenant at property. Uh, all that being said, um, with regards to the specific allegations and concerns, they're very general in nature. Uh, none of them uh, even identify or address the fact that all of this has been vetted by the DEC, by the, DL, uh, by the Department of Transportation. We've been in front of the planning board, board multiple times. We follow our seeker. So um, all, of those, all of those specific concerns have been addressed already before we come before this board, or we wouldn't be here. Um, in addition, I'm not sure where he's coming from in terms of a gas station not being able to be sold. If that property were ever decommissioned, the DEC will require that the tanks be removed, that if there was any contaminants, that they be addressed. Um, I know I do a lot of commercial work, and gas stations and convenience stores and Tim Hortons get sold all the time. So I, I'm, I'm, I appreciate 
his general concerns on behalf of his client. I think the traffic studies, the environmental impact studies that have already been undertaken at considerable expense speak for themselves. And uh, quite frankly, I believe the planning board and the Department of Transportation said this new plan is going to be a significant improvement to traffic safety because of the dedicated turning lanes that will now be there. So uh, other than that, I'll leave it in the sound discretion of the uh, board to make their ruling on this specific uh, special use permit that's before the board tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Are they all rules? 6741 Lever Road. Gentlemen, have you given this to the public? Pictures of this, what all you're going to do? Have you given it to the public? Myself? Anybody else here? Have you given it to them? What you're going to do? Design or anything? We, we, we've provided all the public notice required by law, including multiple appearances in a public forum before the town board, the planning board, on multiple occasions. So it's been public knowledge for a long time. Okay, design. Have you showed the design to the public? At the planning, the last planning board meeting. That's these people. So how, many, how, how, how many How many? people that live up that way, how many businesses up there, have you provided that to them? It's not a legal requirement beyond what, what has already I, been presented. I agree with you, it's not a legal requirement, but it's public whether we like it or not, too. And me, I'm a fisherman. That thing is going to be built just upstream or up the hill from a trout stream. I have concerns. I don't like to see me being affected by something that spills from what you're going to be building up there. And I know that it happens. Because just down the street from where you folks are proposing this, they had a leak in their station here just a week ago. What was that? That's not been published either. Put that information out more so the public can see that. Not just right here. Publish it out where we can see it. I request that, please. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. J. Jackson, 7964 Back Creek Road. I try very hard to make sure that information like this is made public. Um, two or three of the versions of the plan um, are, are out available. Um, one of the things that you do have to do, though, is you have to come and ask sometimes. Um, FOIL request, I believe, is the term for it. Um, uh, it, it that things things develop that if you do pay attention to what's going on in town, you hear these kinds of things. Um, these meetings, uh, planning board meetings, ZBA meetings, uh, conservation council meetings, you, you do hear about those kinds of things. One of the things that I've learned uh, in trying to be involved is how taxes work. Sales tax is reimbursed to the town and Correct me if I'm wrong, it's uh, almost half, if not more, of our income comes from sales tax. That is correct. Um, it doesn't make any difference how many businesses are in town. Um, what it matters on is the population, how many people live in Boston. Um, we, we get uh, all sales tax goes to Erie County. Erie County sums it all up, um, figures out how many people are in, t in each individual town, and that's how the money comes in. It really doesn't have anything to do with how many businesses or uh, that, that sort of thing. I, I was very surprised to learn that. Um, I do have that correct, is that right? That's correct, and the budget presentation reflects that. Thank you. Miranda 7072 Boston State Road on the uh, owner of the project. Um, I just wanted to make a couple comments. We've been in, in business here for 15 years in Boston. We enjoyed the community. We've had a, a, a good business. 
Uh, we provide, you know, what I hope is a, a good service to everybody. Um, when we looked at doing something different over there, we just wanted to improve what we're already doing for the last 15 years. Um, I get a lot of feedback from a lot of customers and a lot of residents uh, about traffic and what's going on in our parking lot, what's going on in our building. Um, and if anybody's frequented over there, that is not the ideal setup for um, our, our business right now. Um, traffic uh, is, our, our drive through is not arranged correctly. Uh, there is a ton of potholes over there right now that we're getting complaints on. Unfortunately, I cannot address those, only the landlord can. Um, so when we look at what we wanted to do, I own, I've owned the property right next door for, for almost 15 years, and we looked at putting this together so we could actually get people in and out in a, in a safer manner, number one. Uh, also, uh, in a, everybody knows everybody's in a hurry when they go to a, go to a Tim Hortons. Um, the, the flow of the traffic coming off of Boston State Road would get off so much quicker. We have a left-hand turning lane. Right now, if people try to turn into our, our parking lot coming from the south, and if they don't pull over far enough, you've got that guardrail, and there's been a couple accidents over there, um, it's not a, a perfect design. Um, we believe that what we're doing will you know, generate, this, this is probably going to be three to four million dollars investment on, on our end. Um, I don't, if, if we had a perfect location now, we wouldn't move uh, because we would not need to move. Why would I move 100, literally it's 100 feet, and spend three million dollars uh, to do it? But we think it's the best thing for a couple reasons. Number one, you know, we, we employ a lot of people. Uh, we also, but bigger than the employment of people is all the vendors that we use, the grass cutters, the, uh, the carpenters, the plumbers, the electricians, the window washers, the garbage guys, all that are, are done locally from local vendors, which again, contributes to the economy. Uh, like the other gentleman said, our sales taxes will go up because uh, obviously we'll try to draw some more traffic. The traffic study that was done, they take those models into consideration and they look at other it's important, they look at other uh, gas stations, they apply those metrics, and then they actually spit out what they believe is going to happen over you know, the next five years, 10 years, as population grows, and the Department of, uh, of Transportation said there would be you know, little, little to no impact at all. Uh, we will spend a significant amount of money getting rid of that lane. I have to pay for all that. Uh, where we, you come off the exit, you have to make, you're gonna have to make a right or a left now. Where today, you would get into the acceleration lane and you would, which nobody uses, my office is right there, that's my office, the, uh, the old Pitry House, is that where, I, where I have my office. Um, nobody really uses that lane and you're trying to, you're trying to merge over sometimes. This design that the DOT probably made us do two or three revisions. We did everything they wanted and they accepted it and it's going to be quite significant impact uh, uh, in terms of financially to get that the way, the way it should look. Um, I believe that it's gonna be a great entrance uh, to, to Boston. That's our entrance right there. Hamburg turns into Boston. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a very, way better than it is today. And when it's under my control, my, there's not gonna be potholes. There's not gonna be lighting issues. There's not going to be um, a lot of the issues that we're having today because I don't control that, uh, that site. I control most of my other sites. I own eight other uh, Tim Hortons, and if you go to, to any of them, either in Orchard Park or Springville or Ellicottville, you can see that we run uh, what we consider a first class operation. So we would do yeah, nothing but does. try to improve it. The only thing we're doing is trying to improve what we have right now. So um, I would you know, appreciate the time that the board has given me. Thank you. Good evening, Frank Gamble, 5771 Homestead Road. Just curious, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but we've got a drawing here, right, on conceptually what this is going to be. My concern and my thought is, has the town board seen conceptually drawings, what this is going to look like aesthetically from the road, right? My concern is not around issues around that, it's around are they going to have a building that's just Tim Hortons with the gas station? Conceptually, what that's going to look like. Draw good, draw good. Okay. 
And they were also have you all seen those drawings? They were submitted to the town also. This is. Can you share with that? This is the south elevation, the north elevation. Um, it's going to be hardy board siding. Um, it's going to have some stone on the bottom. It, it will not be a typical. We went through the same thing down in, in Ellicottville. Uh, where they had certain restrictions on how we could build it, and that's all hardy board siding there. We have stone on the bottom parts as well, and the pillars. So this is not going to be a typical, uh, it's, it's certainly not going to be a brick building that you would see in a traditional gas station where it's just all brick. Um, our office, which we put in the back corner, is going to be the same thing, the same hardy board with uh, uh, the bottom uh, brick down at the bottom. There. So we're making a substantial investment. It's not, and again, this is this is the other side. Uh, here's the south elevation, the north elevation. We have signage that conforms to the signage that the town requires. It's not big. It, I would like bigger signage, but there's certain restrictions that the town has, so we have to abide by that. So, and this is just a filling station. I see garages there. Is this also a service station? Oh my, no, no, no. Just a filling station. The garage. That garage is part of my um, the office building. Okay. For me to park the car. It's, it's just a parking garage. Yeah. yeah there's there yeah there's no there's no repair station. There's nothing. We're looking at putting in two um, yeah. electric uh, no. uh, charging charger, charger, charger stations because there's not a lot of charging stations around here for the electric cars as well. Um, so those are pretty expensive these days, but we're we're looking at getting the high speed ones. And we have two, we've got a seating area, it's not on this one, where the planning board had asked us to put uh, some picnic benches. We have one picnic bench right now that's sitting over in the corner. They said, can you make a bigger picnic bench area so people can sit around? So we eliminated a couple parking spots, uh, and we put a couple of picnic, we put more green. I was going to be my next question around landscape, and how are we bring the rural community to yeah. yes. reality there. Versus what we yeah. have today. Okay. My favorite plan is and they can building next door to it. And you I'm trying to keep some of those trees. I got uh, black walnut trees over there. Yeah. I'm trying to keep a couple of them. This is the landscape plan. Again, we submitted this to the planning board, and the town board also has a copy. But there's significant trees around the whole perimeter of the, of the property. Then we have foundation plantings around <coughs> both the convenience store and the front of the office building. Because um, this building will be visible on all four sides. And as Ray had shown you, you know the, the architecture of the building, the C store, Again, this is the front, you would see. It's, it's broken up because it's the C-store and on the end is the Samoritans. Right? It's not going to be one monolithic uniform material or nothing, you know, something with no vertical elements that would break it up so it looks like a big monolith. And then the peaks, more residential, rural type of roof, as opposed to the flat roof you see in a lot of convenience stores. Well, it was good with all that, then you got it. the full facility now. We did, yes. Okay. The curiosity. Oh, absolutely. Appreciate Hopefully it. That helps too. Thank you. <coughs> Susan Jagger, 8620 Back Creek Road. Um, I have more questions than comments, although I don't know if I can comment too. This is the first I've really heard or seen any of this conceptualized here. Is it going to be the green space that's there right now is that's right along the creek in the middle of the gazebo there. Is that all going to have this building on it right there? The, the creek doesn't come, the creek doesn't go through right front. Okay. I can, I can show you. And where the gazebo is, is probably right where the sea store is going to be. About where the sea store is. The gazebo currently is about, is about here. Okay. But again, the creek, the creek is okay. way, way over. So all that green space is going to be uh, some of the green space will be parking area, obviously, and circulation and drive through area. So, so there are going to be two buildings, the convenience store mm -hmm. and the office building. And the office building. So the brick building now that's your office is going to be gone? Yes, that's a hot, that's a, yeah. Okay. That, that, is that building is approximately where the driveway is going to be. Okay. Um, all right, well my comments are, I don't, this is a little town of Boston and I know progress happens but there is a gas station right down the street from there. And when you get off the 219 Express, where you see Boston, it's like, it's a very nice little farm town. Well, it used to be a farm town, but 
I don't want to see a gas station there. And that's just me. But I, I think I'm not the only one. I like having the Tim Hortons there, although I think this bigger one, Tim Hortons convenience store, office building, parking, that's, even though the DOT has done their due diligence, I don't think that's the reality that's going to happen. So, I, I just think there's going to be more traffic accidents, more of a cluster going on there, you know, the, the nine fires going and coming. So that's, I, I don't, I'm not in the Thank you. Thank you. Carl Simmons, 6678, Meadowbrook Drive, Boston. When I sat up on the town board there years ago, some gentleman told me, he says, the town of Boston does not want to be an island upon itself. We need new development, we need residential, we need commercial. But we're gonna get left behind. We need utilities, we need cell towers, water projects, sewer projects. I'd be in favor of this project. I'm a little I'm not real uh, happy with the with the turning lanes. And, and I'm not going to ask any questions. I don't think a public hearing is a place to ask these questions. I would just ask the town board or the developers to look at maybe putting a roundabout in down there. Because sooner or later, we're going to have a red light down there. Because that property across the street, whether we like it or not, is going to be developed. And once there's more traffic there, you're going to be looking at a red light. So you're going to have a red light at the expressway, a red light at Tim Hortons, and a red light at North Boston. And that's the last thing we need is another red light in town. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Jacker is on 8620 Bakery Grove. And, well, I haven't done my due diligence with the DOT or anybody else, the DEC or any of that, but I've lived here for 65 years, and I know when I see three lanes of traffic heading north and three lanes of traffic heading south, and they're competing to make left turns, I know that's not a good situation. And I know it's not improved or taken, uh, eliminated just by paying more lines on a road. Widening a road, maybe that would work. I really don't know. Like I say, I'm not in the DOT and I don't have that information in front of me, but I know how, I think it's just a bad situation being made worse by moving it closer to the expressway, that egress and ingress from the express from the expressway, and you're gonna draw more traffic from out of Hamburg, more traffic off the expressway than just the people that are in the town. And I agree with Carl, there's going to be three red lights down here. I think you're going to go 250 yards on one red light, but the other side of the expressway, you're going to have another red light, and basically you're just turning this town into another Amherst or Williamsville, and it seems like it's uh, there's a big hurry to do it for some odd reason. I don't understand why, but uh, I'm totally against uh, having a gas station another half mile from another gas station. I just think it's the only one that's going to benefit is the guy that's going to own the, the gas station and the office buildings and and the, and the new other Tim Hortons. That's the only one that's going to benefit nobody else in the town. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Jackson, 7964 Back Creek Road. I look forward to your responses after the uh, hearing closes and the uh, uh, required business for the town uh, is completed uh, during your reports. I'm interested to hear your reactions.
Any other comments? All right, no further comments. I will close the public hearing at 8.02 p.m. Water report. Councilman Carkey, you did say you did have one. Did you, is this pertain to the public hearing? Or? No, it was, it, it's in relation to the project, but uh, I, I can have a better question. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for the uh, they knew they were for the portion of my report if you would be so kind as to stay. And a lot of people do believe she would leave, so. Okay. All right, getting back into regular business for t tonight. Uh, we're going to go back to item number two under our agenda tonight, which is, uh, again, once again, regular business. The second item uh, of the business tonight is the consideration of all fund bills. And Councilman Selby, would you like to take that item tonight? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. After reviewing all the fund bills, I would like to make a motion to make payment of $148,249.16. I'll second. Councilman Selby? Yes. Councilman Carakini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. All right. Item number three tonight is our correspondence. There are 11 items of correspondence that have all been received and filed with the town clerk's office, and they are as follows. Item number one is the Town of Boston Dog Control Officer Report for April 2023. Item number two is a town clerk's report for April 2023. The third item is a Erie County Water Authority 2022 <coughs> Annual Water Quality Report. Item number four is a letter from Barbara Persanti, I will pronounce that correct, correctly, uh, regarding the opposition to a solar project in town. <coughs> a proposed solar project, that is. Uh, item number five is a letter from Erie County for the Department of Public Works, a notice of closure for Back Creek Road. Uh, in, in ladies and gentlemen that are here tonight and anyone watching at home, because these meetings are live streamed, there is a notice that is in the town clerk's office that's out on the town website. Uh, Back Creek Road will be closed in the very near future. Uh, it's for the slide that's down on Back Creek Road. Uh, but uh, Erie County does not, i kind of summarize this, but Erie County does not have the ability to close Patchen Road because that's a town road. So to cr uh, prevent any cross traffic, they're uh, clo closing other than local traffic from Zimmerman Road all the way to Mill. It'll be for local traffic up until the point where that stream bank stabilization and that road has to be taken out to then have the road uh, restored uh, in proper order. Um, and that project's completion date is uh, the tail end of October. At least that's, you know, that's, that's as of today. So as more uh, updates you know, come out, we'll be sure to pass that information along. Uh, that's something I definitely want to draw attention to tonight. <coughs> um, item number six is the Department of Public Works, Erie County Department of Public Works. Uh, here's the detour and detour sign schedule for Back Creek Road. Item number seven is a comparative year end on fund balances provided to, uh, from my, uh, my offices to the town board. Item number eight is a January through March 2023 cash balances. Uh, item number nine is an April 2023 interest income analysis to the town board. Item number 10 is a April 2023 income statement. And uh, number 11 is the April 2023 cash balances. Again, all these items have been uh, sent and received uh, by the town clerk's office. Moving along to item number four, new business. Um, request from the floor. I don't know if any there's any other items, but I will certainly open up the floor for any other items of business or conversation with the town. The floor is open. So Jason, on Back Creek Road, what part is going to be closed again? From Zimmerman to Mill? They're, they're, uh, uh, Erie County is shutting down Zimmerman uh, all the way to Mill Street. And just to do the slide down there on your yes. right road? Yes, so the, the theory behind that through Erie County Traffic and Safety Division is that, you know, I don't know, Jason Keating wants to go down Back Creek Road and I live down there and stuff coming down Boston Street, I, I, uh, Boston State, I may you know, go down Zimmerman, jump on the Back Creek and come home that way. So what they're trying to do is uh, lessen the amount of traffic flow on Back Creek Road uh, because they will have, uh, you, what, you've probably seen some of the construction equipment over there where you live. Um, but from you know, the brush cleaning, the tree clearing, and right now a, a lot of the, a lot of the construction is on pause because of uh, uh, 18 Mile Creek being a protected waterway. Uh, they can't do stream bank uh, disturbance in that area up until I think it's you know, off the top of my head. I believe it's the end of end of this month, early next month. Uh, going back to the trial conversation you know, comment that was made earlier. Uh, so with that being said, um, that they're, they're just trying to mitigate the traffic and essentially you know, get people in a routine of this detour to try to keep traffic away from that area so they can get their vehicles in and out. Okay. 
So uh, while this trip is being basically shut down quite a bit, is it, would it be possible that they could do some maintenance that has never been done there in 40 or 50 years, like cleaning the dishes so the water doesn't flood the roads constantly? Another good question. Um, so the, I, I have brought this up a couple of times in past board meeting um, uh, conversations. The uh, at least Erie County has com committed that once this slide has been restored, that they're going to work on uh, patching to mill, and they're going to try to resurface and uh, fix some of the drainage problems there, potentially even try to widen it a little bit based off the county's right of way that they have, uh, and then potentially the rest of Back Creek Road. Originally, the, the original plan was all of Back Creek Road. I mean, here we all sit in 2023, the cost of asphalt, labor, material, getting material, you know, I could run, up, run the litany of uh, things, but that cost, uh, you know, has gotten substantially higher. So all of Back Creek Road will not be done, but uh, uh, Commissioner Gary, respectfully, is the one I've had conversations with on this exact matter, and uh, from patch and down to mill is going to have allegedly work done on it. I, I don't have anything in writing, but this is the conversation, and, uh, and legislator Mills has been pushing that as well. So we're going to have some work done. Yeah. Uh, supposedly it's going, from what we're told, if legislative mills didn't come in, uh, this was going to be a mill that resurfaced and, and widened and tried to fix drainage. Okay. Uh, well, um, it took five years to get that slot. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad to say I have to give birthday cakes to that project, but... Uh, probably another five years in the I hope not. We'll see. But good question. Mr. Jenker, I live directly um, behind the work site, and yeah, they've been there working. Yeah, the markers all lost track. Yeah, so there. It was great to see that equipment show up and start to hear noise. So I know it's it's been bad. I drive that road just to look at the condition. <coughs> from, you know. from their schedule, I was reading on that. If that's correct, when I read online, it says they're not going to show up until what September or October to finish the project back there. That's what the schedule said. That's the, I believe, don't quote me on this, I have it downstairs. If you'd like a copy, I'd be happy to get it to you after the meeting. Um, but that, that I believe is the finished, you know, basically what they call referred to as comeback work. So after the road has been restored, uh, they, again, the target completion date is Halloween. So, yeah, that, that, road, that area will have, if you will, disturbance up until yeah, they the end of They just knocked a bunch of trees out and they didn't, they didn't back them off. Uh, and that's because of DEC requirement, uh, DEC regulations. They can't disturb the stream bank or change the translucency of the water, I believe is the correct language, uh, under DEC regulations. So they can't do it now, but they can do it in a month or two from now? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Wow. Yeah. It's probably responding. That's what yeah. it is. It's probably yeah, responding. That's yeah. the reason for it. Okay. Yeah, the DEC, uh, if for those of you don't, that don't know, uh, the DEC, uh, actually a resident in town, um, he, he's, he's very graciously. So, so the fish always spawn in that section of... Uh, well, they can go anywhere. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah we, we can definitely go down a, a rabbit hole, so to speak, with, yeah. uh, with a conversation of fish. But yes, it's a, because it's a protected waterway, they, they can't disturb the water. Spawn. And that's why, if you look at the, if you see the construction schedule, obviously always subject to change. But if you look at that construction schedule, there is a pretty substantial, I believe it's a month and a half block of time. Yeah. Okay. No, no construction will be happening. Right. That is a true statement, yes. Okay. Yep. What about the deer? They only cross at the signs. You <laughs> <laughs> Other comment? I'll close the floor, keep things moving right along. <clears throat> All right, uh, the next item uh, of business we've already uh, handled. Item number two was just a public hearing for the special use, use permit. Again, that was the open floor session we just had a little while ago. Uh, item number three is to reschedule a public hearing for a special use permit for an accessory apartment located at 8947 Pearl Street. Councilman Cardiquin, would you like to take that item? Tonight? Thank you, Supervisor Keating. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we reschedule a public hearing for a special use permit accessory apartment at 8947 Pearl Street. It was originally scheduled for June 7th, 2023. It needs to be scheduled for June 21st, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. I'll second it. Councilwoman Selby? Yes. Councilman Caracchini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carries. 
All right, the next item is item number four tonight is a request for reappointment from Sharon Stewart to the Conservation Advisory Council. Council Woman Martin. Supervisor, um, we received a letter from Sharon Stewart um, requesting her reappointment to the Conservation Advisory Council for the next term of March, uh, for another term from March 2020. I think this should be 2023. No, it is March 2022. Um, there was some confusion. So she did not request reappointment for March of 2022? Okay. So it's from March 2022 to March 2024. I make a motion to accept her reappointment. I'll second. Councilwoman Selby? Yes. Councilman Keating? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Um, item number five tonight is a resolution 2023-47. Uh, this is for the Seeger Negative Declaration for the Mixed Use Development. Uh, this is the conversation again for the public hearing located at 7072 Boston State Road. Um, I guess I will open this up to the board at this time. Uh, do we want to move forward with this uh, board, board members? Or we to, uh, I guess it's my opinion, I'd like to make a motion to entertain uh, tabling this matter, uh, to allow, to allow the applicant to uh, respond to some of these questions to the town board. Everyone's okay with that, or if we would like to approve it tonight? We could reply tonight if you want. There's only, I think, a, maybe a handful of items that we can possibly address. If you prefer, it's up to, it's up to you. Right. I, I think it's reasonable to uh, ask for some of the concerns to be addressed in writing and added to the file for the project. Um, that's my opinion on it. Okay. Okay. All right. So with that being said. Um, Items uh, five, six, and seven tonight, which uh, I will read all three of these. I'd like to make a motion to table these items. Uh, so items five, six, and seven, the motion it will be to table resolution 2023-47, which is the seeker, which is referred to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, negative declaration for mixed use of development, 7072 Boston State Road. Item number six is resolution 2023-48 for a special use permit for the filling station located at 7072 Boston State Road. And item number seven is a resolution number 2023-49 for site plan approval for mixed use development located at 77, I'm sorry, 7072 Boston State Road. Motion is on table. I'll second. Councilman Zelby? Yes. Councilman Harkini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilman Murray? Yes. Motion carried to table. All right, <clears throat> moving along. So uh, those items are tabled. The next item is number uh, number eight on our agenda, resolution 2023-50 uh, to amend the budget to properly account for a justice court grant received. And uh, Councilwoman uh, Selby, would you like to have that, uh, that item and item number 51 tonight? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 2023-50 whereas we are increasing our appropriations for our justice equipment for 9,900. We're decreasing appropriations for the central communication equipment line for 2,700, and we're increasing our revenues for general government grants uh, for 7,200. I'd like to make a motion to approve this resolution. I'll second. Councilwoman Selby? Yes. Councilman Cartini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, <clears throat> the next item tonight is uh, item, uh, item number nine, uh, again, resolution 2023-51 to amend the budget to properly account for the ASI, also referred to as the Arts and Services Initiative Grant received. And Councilwoman uh, Sully, would you like to take that item? Thank you again. We have a financial um, appropriation for resolution number 2023-51, where we'd like to increase our appropriation for our band concerts for $4,000 and we're increasing our revenues for cultural grants for four thousand dollars i'd like to make a motion to approve these budget amendments i'll second councilwoman selby yes councilman cardichini yes supervisor Keating. yes councilwoman martin yes motion carried all right uh, item number 10 tonight is resolution 2023-52 for the 2023 budget transfers and councilwoman martin would you like to take that item sure supervisor um there were some accounts noted to need adjustments due to expenditures exceeding our expectations. So the town board hereby authorizes amending the town's 2023 budget 
um, and transfer appropriations from buildings and equipment of 4,500 and hospital and medical insurance of 10,000 um, totaling 14,500 and transfer appropriations to unallocated insurance expenditure of 6,000 workers compensation of 4,000 and um, central print and mail equipment 4,500 totaling 14,500 making it an even swap. I make a, a motion to accept resolution 2023-52. I'll second. Councilwoman Selby? Yes. Councilman Tartikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. All right, item number 11 tonight is a, uh, a motion to authorize the use of facility reduction of cost and associ uh, associated refund to the South Town Slammers. And Councilman Tartikini, would you like to take that out? Thank you, Supervisor Keating. Uh, the South Town Slammers paid $150 for their use of facility for the town's baseball fields due to discussions with the town board over the 2023 sports league price being increased. Other sporting leagues in town paid the normal $75 use of the facility fee. As such, the town board is authorizing reduction in fee and associated refund to the South Town Slammers in the amount of $75 so they would uh, be equivalent to the $75 paid by the other sporting leagues. I make a motion that we uh, refund them the $75. I'll second. Councilwoman Selby? Yes. Councilman Carrikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilwoman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. All right, uh, the last two items tonight on our agenda, uh, items number 12 and 13, I'm gonna make a motion to table both of these items. Uh, item number 12 is an ambulance purchase by the Boston Emergency Squad. Uh, this was going to be a resolution for the uh, procurement of a new ambulance for the Boston Emergency Squad. Uh, we, we were hoping to have the information, so we have had to edit the agenda. Of course, it got down to the 11th hour. We did not have that, so we, we tried, and we tried to keep things moving along, and uh, you know, sometimes things don't always work as planned. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, table, table item number 12 tonight. I'll second. second. Councilman Selby? Yes. Councilman Carrikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilman Martin? Yes. A motion has been made. Motion carries. Table. Motion table. Motion table. Thank you. And in item 13, uh, the town clerk and I were both working on this one, similar type of scenario. We, uh, it's actually very, very nice to say that we have a outside organization looking to use our town grounds for baseball. Uh, we, we have uh, anticipated uh, all the complete documentation uh, for this meeting, and uh, we had half of the information. We don't have all of it, so I'd like to make a motion to table the application for use of facility for CAP 17 Baseball Academy, and hopefully we can catch them on the next meeting. I'll second that. Councilman Selby? Yes. Councilman Cardikini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilman Martin? Yes. Motion carried to table the application for this facility. All right. Now, that is all for our new business. We have no old business, so reports and presentations. Councilwoman Selby, get the floor. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'd like to thank everybody who spoke tonight on the project and um, the gentleman who presented. It was a very well informed presentation. I thank the work that you guys all put into it and the attorney, a wonderful job explaining everything. Originally on paper, this sounded like a great project to me. I was for it, um, to be totally honest. Um, it's really good to hear all the opinions of everybody and we look forward to getting um, those questions and concerns from the public answered. And once we get that, we'll all look at it. We'll that we evaluate it and everybody is welcome to hear those questions answered and we'll have to make a decision so thank you all for you know your input and the information i appreciate it very much that's all i have all right thank you very much councilman curtis keating you have the floor thank you supervisor keating um i i do have a question two two questions um we have a lovely sign at the beginning of town, right at the entrance of the town. What, what would happen to that sign? The, 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 the right it's in the right of way, so it would stay. stay. So it would stay? Okay. Okay. Um, and then re regarding the, the traffic circle, um, I thought that was a great idea. It, it's worked very well in the town of Hamburg. Uh, I remember when the traffic lights, it would take you forever to get through Hamburg, and, now you really only have to worry about traffic coming from one way. Is, was that part of your exploration with 
the, the state DOT? When, when, when the traffic consultant does the traffic study, they look at different warrants for different types of intersections. I mean, one of the, one of the warrants that you look at is for a traffic signal. Um, and the warrants aren't met based on the amount of traffic generated. I think one of the residents mentioned if something happened across the street, if something happened across the street, they'd have to do a traffic study, take into account our stuff, and maybe at that point one would be warranted. But the DOT, same with the traffic circle, they don't go in and do major highway improvements without it being fully warranted. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm certainly not a DOT expert, but with the on and off ramp for the 219, that would actually most likely be a double lane, where you would have a lane going onto the 219 and a lane continuing straight. If, um, if there was a traffic circle? Yeah. Potentially, I'm not, I'm not the traffic engineer. Right, but, um, I understand that. Potentially, and uh, they did look at that intersection. That we are making some changes to the off ramp there. Um, rather than having that acceleration lane, we are making it a full stop left turn, right turn. Right, just like the it. just like the exit for Orchard Park. That's what that is. Correct, right. As opposed to having it right now, the if you're going south, you can just basically go without stopping. Right. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I think the expectation is, you know, we'd like to see a formal response to the concerns that we heard tonight, and for us to consider and you know make make a good decision. Um, I will say publicly, I I am for the project. Uh, the, the, the north end of town is, is really the business district of the town. And we looked at another project that uh, Mr. Simmons referenced across the street. And there were a lot of reasons that that project was tabled. It wasn't, it wasn't denied, it was tabled. But when you look at the development opportunities in the town of Boston, it's very limited. And so you want to make sure that the right things are going to go there. The, the, plus side for this project is it's zoned properly, they have the frontage they need, and it, it's passed the seeker process, it's gone through an extensive review with the planning board, and I'm sure uh, you're aware that the planning board is nothing easy to, to get through in this town. Uh, we have good people that are on that board, they're very thorough and deliberate in what they do, um, but the, again, there's, there's only so much that you can do in this town to grow, and and I'm not saying I'm for growing, you know, pave every open lot and get rid of the green space, but you know, somebody in this room told me many years ago, who also was on this board, that the town of Boston really ceased being a, a agricultural community in the 50s, when the all the neighborhoods were starting to be built, people were selling farms, you had you know different development projects, so. With that being said, I'd also like to put forth to the people that spoke tonight, I, I wrote down everybody's comments. Um, if you see us up here writing while you're speaking, that's what we're doing. We're writing notes so we can remember what people said, where they lived, so that we can also follow up with to see if these concerns are gonna be you know, addressed formally. Um, that being said, whenever somebody brings a project to the town, there's a process that it has to go through. There's there's an environmental impact study done. If there's a, any change in zoning that's required, it has to go before the zoning board. The planning board, to their credit, to the you know, benefit of the town, manages everything down from lighting to landscaping to green space to you know, ingress and egress. And with this project, it's, it's a little more elevated because of the location of where it is. Um, I've lived in this town for quite a few years. I know I'm not a native Bostonian and probably never will be accepted as one, but uh, you know, 18 years in this town, and you know, the, when the Tim Hortons went in, you know, that, that really was a, a hard place to navigate. I mean, you have to really pay attention to people stopping, and I know people are accelerating and getting, you know, they want to get on the two, 219, they want to get into Hamburg, so, you know, I've been caught in that bottleneck, you know, many times. I'm, I'm a patron of, of, the, uh, of Tim Hortons, and, you know, so th this is very interesting, the way that the traffic, you know, was looked at. Um, personally, I would really like to see 
a circle there rather than a light um, because it is only a matter of time before that site across the street is, you know, I look at that as the crown jewel of the development site for the town of Austin. And the reason for that is if you travel south on the 219 and you look at each exit and you look at how that's been developed over the years and with the idea that our commercial district is really in the, in the north side of the town, if you look at those exits and you know if you're traveling from West Seneca on the 219, the first exit you come to is Miles Turk Road. We've got the Coles Plaza, you know, the movie theater. On the other side of the road, you've got you know, um, medical facilities and universities, or colleges rather. You know, the southwest side of that is undeveloped, I think largely because of the power lines that go through there. And then the southeast side of that is Buffalo Harley-Davidson. You know, there's, it's an industrial area, and that connects up to you know, the, the, the auto mile. Or I don't know if it's a mile. Yeah, so then you continue one, one south. You've got, that's uh, the Orchard Park, the first exit in Orchard Park. You know, there you have, you know, Tim Hortons, UB Orthopedics. You've got a lumber yard. On the other side of it, it's, it's quasi-industrial. Uh, I know there's jewelers over there. There's manufacturers over there. The southwest side of that exit is on 20A is, is an auto school. Uh, part of, um, I think it's Erie Community College. Yes. Carry one more exit south of that is Armor Duels. And that's residential on all four corners. So the next exit down is our exit. And one of the reasons we stood in front of the project that was on that site that was proposed was it was going to be for storage units. That's the entrance to our town. I didn't want to see storage units going in there. I mean, that's a prime location for a mixed-use development project where you would have professional space, you'd have retail space, you'd have residential space. And the problem that that project had was they didn't have the road frontage they needed for that to go through. So I appreciate everybody's comments, and I would encourage you all. I mean, we're, we're in the throes of developing a comprehensive plan. We received a large grant for this. There's a public in, input component of that where, you know, everybody's concerns, everybody's views, you, it, it's a, a great voice. And it's really a plan for the town of 5, 10, 15 years out. And what I personally would like to see is, you know, we have all these wonderful buildings on, on the south end of town. You know, a lot of them are historic. And people are investing in those. And, and rehabilitating some of these places. I'd love to see words be one of them. I'm sure everybody here would. But, you know, section, take a look at the town and see what, you know, what makes sense for the town. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's important that people get involved in it. Um, so that's all I have tonight. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Martin, you have the floor. Well, I have to agree with both my, my fellow council members and I also um, am for the project just be on record with that. Um, I like how you segued into the comprehensive plan that, that um, we're currently working to get started. So everybody's welcome to sit in on that and have a, a say in what direction our town is moving and what you'd like it to look at look like. Um, we want it to be uh, productive. We want it to earn money, stay solvent, and um, create jobs, create green space, be the, the rural feel, but at the same time, be current. So we welcome your, your opinions on that, and I am also looking forward to having our, our couple of questions answered. That's all I have today. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, you have the floor. Thank you, Supervisor Katie. Uh, the town hall offices will be closed on Memorial Day, but the town will be holding the um, Memorial Day parade at 1 p.m. That will be from uh, Faith United Church of Christ to the town park. Uh, the memorial service will follow the parade and the town band will be performing um, at that. The next Connect Life Blood Drive is Tuesday, June 6th from 2 to 7 p.m. in the community room. Um, some other um, events since we're 
going into summer here. I think everyone is looking forward to that. They'll be having some, uh, there will be uh, some fundraisers and some uh, dinners that will be going on in town. St. John the Baptist Roman Catholic Church will be holding their Polish dinner and it will be Sunday, June 11th from 11.30 till 2. Uh, Saturday, June 17th will be the Trooper Brinkerhoff uh, run. That's the 5 and the 10K race. From, that is from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. And also on that day is the Boston Fire Company will hold their benefit auction. So if you have uh, donated items that you would like to uh, provide and donate to the Boston Fire Company, uh, please um, go to their website. They are uh, listed um, who you can contact to uh, to have them come and pick up your items. And then on Sunday, June 18th, Father's Day, that will be the Lion, uh, the Boston Lions Club will be holding their annual Father's Day uh, chicken barbecue. That is from uh, 3 p.m. until uh, sold out or 5.30 p.m. That's all I have, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I guess, Councilor, my fellow board member said a lot about about this project that's, that's up here, and, I, and really, it is great to see everybody come out. We had actually quite a, quite a nice turnout the last board meeting on another topic, <coughs> solar. Um, Councilman Cardike, I think, said a great at the last meeting. He said it very eloquently at this meeting. You know, the world of development. I I, I don't want to say I wish we could stop it because we can't. Um, but there are there are laws that, and you know, to the developer's point here, there's this, the seeker process, State Environmental Quality Review Act. That's traffic studies, environmental impact studies, and other things. There, there, that's a heavy lift. There's what's called a short form. There's what's called a long form. So a lot of these concerns that you know we have as a community are part of that documented process. Uh, for this special use permit, yes, special use permit is a town function. This is think of it almost like our the, this town board. It's the ability to say, okay, have the I's been dotted, the T's been crossed, properly representing you as a taxpayer, residents of our community. That's the purpose of that special use permit. It's not necessarily a let's shut down the project type of application permit. That's not how that works. Uh, legitimately, legally speaking, uh, you know, a a project if it's zoned properly. Compliant to code and design, you know, all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, environmental impact study, traffic studies, and otherwise, most likely a project's going to go through. And I've did the example, you know, I mean, I, I, again, I think um, uh, Councilman Carter Keeney said it great. The example I've used with residents if I own a parcel of land that's, let's say, a quarter acre to three acres, and I live in, in that parcel's next door to you, and you've enjoyed, you know, seeing the wildlife and the birds and everything next door, and someday I say, hey, I, I want to put my house there, as long as I show up to the building uh, code enforcement office, with my, my builder, we have a stamp set of plans, we apply for a permit, we go through the process. Someday, you know, there's gonna be construction vehicles sitting out there cutting trees down and getting ready to put in my foundation and everything. I, you know, it, I, it's, it's, it, I know it's a tough pill to swallow sometimes. We're, we're absolutely talking about large projects in our community. And we've had that conversation with you know, Dollar General back in the past and other things. It, 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 you know, we do take a hard look at that. I will, again, as Councilman Carter, I, I give him a lot of credit here. Uh, get, we, we give a, lot, a real hard look at these projects, and the, the planning board does a lot of that. And that's the part that I guess I want to clarify, is that there's a planning board, and then there's the town board. The planning board does a lot of this, if you will, kind of heavy lift. This application, the process, that all goes to the planning board before it even comes to the town board. We are two separate boards. They've gone through state training. They're the ones that look at the, to, again, to the lighting, traffic studies. They, they assess all that. They provide that as an advisory board to the town board. They provide that information to us to make an informed decision based off of our applicants in our community. So there is a process. There are checks and balances. It's not just an arbitrary, yes, this looks good here. Let's put a rubber stamp on it and push it through. There's a paper process and there's a paper trail that, that, that ties all of this out. So that being said, <clears throat> you have the traffic study. Uh, for those of you that follow board meeting minutes and all, here's a perfect example of traffic when uh, you get to the developer's uh, point with the traffic circle. I personally like them as well. I, I'm, I've always been a big fan of them. I think many of us up here are. Um, but what I can tell you is that a uh, perfect example is Taylor and Eckert. We have asked multiple times for a four-way stop up there. We have sent letters. We've, we've done our due diligence. We have sent the information to the county, to New York State. Again, based off of a traffic study, New York State DOT law, which is uh, the MUTCD, Manual Uniform Traffic Code, um, they come back and say, based off of traffic count, based off of that area, it does not warrant a four-way stop. I would love to have a four-way four stop there. I would. I, I look at all of you dead in the eye tonight and tell you, these are the things that we tried to do. There's a section of law, whether we like it or not, that comes in and says, sorry, you don't hit the mark. 
and a perfect, I do not live in town at this point in time. I'm not the lifelong resident here in town, but I can tell you the flashing light down by Star Service. That's kind of that classic example. The community, to my knowledge, has had asked for some kind of a traffic calming device down in that area. And sadly, it wasn't until there was a pretty tragic motor vehicle accident down in that area that that flashing light go in. That's a fact. That's on the books. That's there. So, you know, it, it, are these things perfect? They're not. I, I, won't, I won't belabor or try to hide from that. But we do try to do our best for all of you in this room. And it is nice to see all of you come out. Please take, you know, follow the town website. This meeting, like all meetings, uh, thanks to some uh, grant money, they're all live streamed. If you want to know what's going on at a town board meeting, they're live streamed. And then when the town clerk hits stop, it gets bundled out, pushed out to our website. Nice little YouTube file, and you can go watch it, you know, later on at night if you want to. But that's good, open, transparent government. You know, we've always believed on not, you know, we don't want to hide anything. We want to be open and transparent with all of you. Uh, so with that being said, you know, that, that's, I guess, all I'll say. Um, I do think it's a decent project. I really do. I think uh, you've done a nice job. I, I respectfully, I think the planning job, uh, board uh, has done a great job as well. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get those questions answered. We'll get them back out to the public. I mean, just one second. Um, the comp plan, uh, again, that was brought up. Please get involved. We were, all of you here tonight, this is exactly what this town board, the planning board, um, really the conservation advisory council, the air advisory council to the town board as well for the environmental impact side of things. This comprehensive plan is every taxpayer in the town of Boston's ability to come in and say, hey, this is what we want in our community. Again, can we exactly stipulate what, what happens in particular? Not, not exactly. It's based on the way it's zoned. It's based on the way, you know, again, there's other components that go into this. But can we look at the hamlets of Boston, Patchett, North Boston, and then design a comprehensive plan that fits what we're looking for as a totality in, in the community? That's the idea of this. We, did, we were able to secure two grants, one county, one state, doesn't, you know, this does not hit and affect you as taxpayers. You know, we, we worked hard to get those grants. Uh, so again, please get engaged. It's roughly about a year, year and a half long process, but we are looking for feedback. And part of this is, you know, when we're talking about building out and creating jobs and, and wait, reasons for people to stay here, we're gonna be reaching out to the 18 and under age uh, and saying, hey, or do you plan on staying in the town of Boston? I mean, this is somebody's children. And if the answer is no, why? Why, why do you want to leave Boston? Are there not enough jobs here? Well, why, you know, are you looking to go, I also are probably looking to go to college, fair, fair being fair, but if somebody's not looking to go to college, what's taking you away? Why are you going across the line over to Hamburg? Again, not a perfect solution. I know there's a lot of you know, pros and cons in this conversation that I'm having, but these are the things in the feedback that we're looking for that comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan does exist for anybody who wants to see it. It's over 20 years old. Uh, but that's, uh, again, we're looking, as a town board, we're looking for your feedback. So please engage, please follow up with us. Uh, a letter was sent out uh, just last week to all the local businesses in the community. Everybody should have received them. I've received a couple of uh, uh, responses already, which is fantastic. Uh, so certainly stay tuned on that. <clears throat> um, and then, you know, the other thing I just wanted to comment on, you know, with the, uh, the, the accidents in front of the Tim Hortons, uh, again, here's it's, again, I wanted to bring this up as another example is that unfortunately the accidents in front, many of the accidents in front of Tim Hortons when I looked at the, uh, the, some of the studies and all, and then also followed up with Hamburg Dispatch, some of these accidents are people, uh, are because motor vehicle operators, how about that? I'll phrase it this way, motor vehicle operators are riding the shoulder of the road. No traffic humming device in the world is going to stop potentially a motor vehicle accident. You could have a stoplight, you could have a traffic circle, you could have anything. If, if a person makes a conscious decision to deviate off the side of the road, go around and gets and then gets a T-bone, which a lot of those accidents are, a traffic calming device is not a perfect solution. To that. I, I don't have a good answer for that. I'm not, I'm not an expert, nor do I ever claim to be. Um, but you know, again, these are some of the things. Again, this is the kind of hard look and the conversations that are happening behind the scenes. We really are looking at this. We appreciate the feedback. We'll work with the developer to uh, you know get some of the answers here. We'll get, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, and the last thing I have for tonight is that the June 7th meeting uh, has been canceled, um, so we will not have another uh, town board meeting until, <clears throat> excuse me, until June 21st, uh, same time, 7.30 p.m. on June 21st. Um, but that is all I have for tonight. I would uh, make a motion to end the meeting at 8.41 p.m. I'll second. Councilman Selby? Yes. Councilman Cartagini? Yes. Supervisor Keating? Yes. Councilman Martin? Yes. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned.